Okay, so uh, first thing is defining what a limited company is. So what is a company? It's a business. And how is it structured? It's earnings and shareholders. Okay, good. Shareholders is the key. Um, so we've looked at a sole proprietor, one person owning a business. Then we've looked at a partnership, two or more. Um, and now we're looking at many people owning a, um, a small little share in the company. Okay, so you can define it. A limited company is a separate legal entity. A separate legal entity owned by shareholders. Okay, they've highlighted the word shareholders here. Um, limited company. Yeah, a separate legal entity. Yeah, well, limited companies are separate legal entities and are owned by shareholders. Yeah, so the, the word separate legal entity is important because um, can the company continue irrespective of who's the owner? Yes. Yeah. Okay, with the partnership, if the one partner leaves, the partnership's over. Yeah. Okay. They're not owned, sorry. Um, by shareholders. Okay, they, they contrast the two here. So um, they say what are the main features of a partnership in a private company? It's in the table. Um, so we can put some of these points down. The first one would be um, at least one shareholder, but no maximum. So you could have millions of shareholders if you wanted to. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so um, at least one shareholder, but no maximum. It's unlimited. As long as you're holding shares in the company, you're a shareholder. A second bullet um, that they've mentioned here, limited liability. No, no maximum. At least one shareholder, no maximum. Um, second point, limited liability. It is limited liability. Um, well, asterisk that because directors can be held personally liable if they commit fraud. Okay, but if they don't and the business fails, they're not liable. Their personal assets will be taken. Okay. Uh, profits are distributed in the form of dividends. That's the next one. Dividends are paid. The share of a profit is called dividends. No profits distributed dividends. Okay, corporate tax is charged. So do companies pay their own taxes? Yes. Okay, they've got to pay their own taxes. Company tax. Uh, in brackets you can say separate. Right, so they're taxed as an individual, kind of. Okay. And then the last point here is shareholders have a say in the management of the business. Right, so if you're a shareholder you can vote and you can um, uh, you can make the company do certain things okay, in terms of decision making. Shareholders have a say in? Um, in the decision making. Because they can vote. Okay, from your business, there's two types of companies. They have mentioned here as well. Private and public, do you know the difference? Uh, okay, good. So let's put a note here. Public versus private companies. Get two types of companies. Under the word, under the word uh, public, you just put a bracket there, PLC. That's how you recognize a public company. And then under the word private, you can just write limited, LTD. LTD. Okay, and that represents those two companies. So what is the difference? Um, Can you think of some points? There's quite a few, they've given three. Three differences, yeah. So public, they have to make their financial <laughs> statements available to the public. Very good, that's important. So underneath that, you can just say, audited financial statements. They have to be audited. Audited means they're checked by auditors. 
Auditors just check the books to make sure that they're accurate. It's to provide um, additional uh, support. Okay, to say, well, these books are accurate and they're correct. You can use them for decision making. Private companies don't. Um, there could be restrictions on the buying and selling of shares. Okay, so with private companies, you can say uh, possible restrictions, or you can say restrictions. <coughs> restricted shares. Um, well, restricted shares would apply more so to public than to, uh, more to private than to public. So when you say restricted shares, you can say brackets um, for private companies. Oh, but I thought you were public. Yeah, we were, we are discussing, uh, but the restriction, so share trading can be restricted for private, and no restriction for public. So um, you can just put in no restricted, no restrictions for public, restricted for uh, private. No restricted shares. Okay. Okay. Cool. Anyone can buy if they want. Okay, that's the last bit of theory. Uh, maybe if you want to put something there, because you put an arrow, um, you can say not listed on the JSE as private. Well, JSE, um, New York, London, any of the stock exchanges can not listed on a stock exchange, depending on where you are in the world. Okay, so we cannot access those those shares. Okay, only private individuals that have equity in the business will be able to sell shares in, in the private company. Okay. okay. All right, uh, new heading, financial statements. They are, let's see, one. I'm going to give you two. Okay, it's the normal three. No cash flow. Yeah, no cash flow. This is financial statements. Yeah, you can just say financial statements for the company, and then we can list them. Statements number one, income statements. It's the normal. Okay, uh, which elements do we see in the income statements? There are six elements. Uh, they all get disclosed in the income statement. What does the company disclose? The profit. And loss. the loss. Well, profit or loss. Good. So the income and Expense. Expense is 100%. Okay. Right. So uh, you can say income less expenses equals profit slash loss. Income. Income minus expenses equals profit slash loss. Okay. So we show income and expenses in the income statements. Uh, here are a few terms that you need to be familiar with that are different for a company compared to a partnership or a sole proprietor. Okay, so obviously something like rent could apply to all of them, do you agree? Yeah. Okay, something like salaries and wages could apply to all of them. Right, so the first one here is looking to revenue. Revenue you should know. Revenue is what? The money income. From sales. Exactly, from sales or sales <coughs> of revenue. Yeah. Right, so underneath income you can just write the word revenue as one example. So you can show revenue in its different categories. Okay, a, a large company might have various forms of revenue. They don't just do one thing that you need. Yeah. Okay, then underneath the word expenses, you can put the word overheads. Overheads such as rent. Okay, overheads, things that are uh, covered by the entire company. Okay, like this. Uh, finance costs, where would that go? Good. Okay, why do big companies have finance costs? Because they lend money, they have to pay interest. So the finance cost is what they pay on their debts. Yes, if you take out a loan, you're going to have finance costs. Right, uh, dividends, that's separate to this. That's something that you need to look at in a different statement. So skip maybe three or four lines. 
Uh, well, let's write down the rest then. Yeah. Dividends, 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 debenture interest. That one you can write here. And the expense here. Yeah. Okay, debenture interest would be an expense. Something that the loan would have given rise to. Okay, then you can uh, write a new heading, new statement, statement of changes in equity. And then we can add others. Okay, so the company uh, differentiated between two types of dividends because you get two types of shareholders in equity. That's the second statement. Okay, okay so what are we going to show here? Owner's equity. Okay, owner's equity comprises of what? Capital, drawings, and the profit or loss. Okay, there's actually two equations for owner's equity. Right, but we're looking at the statement of, uh, statement of changes in equity, so we're only looking at the equity. So, capital, comma, drawings, comma, profit slash loss. Those would be the accounts that would be affected in that statement. Okay, profit or loss. Okay, we do need to show what the difference is between these two shareholders. Okay, so underneath this you can say two types of shareholders exist. Or two types of, let's say two types of shares uh, as a heading. So as a, um, an arrow bullet, two types of shares. Number one, ordinary shares. Number two, preference shares. Okay, so it's right about ordinary shares. Okay, so ordinary shares, they've said here, uh, ordinary shareholders will receive an ordinary dividend and ordinary shareholders will receive a vote. Okay, so obviously they have a say how the company is run. Okay, so ordinary shares are just the normal shares that you issue. Okay, so you can just say inverted commas normal shares. You can say ordinary dividends. Okay, so uh, those normal shares receive a dividend. Ordinary share dividends. You can say voting rights. Okay. Uh, next bit. Uh, preference shareholders or preference shares. Preference shareholders will have preference shares, and that gives them an entitlement. Okay. Preference. Shares. Okay, so what's special about a preference share? A dividend must be paid to the shareholder. They take preference. A dividend must be paid. Yeah. Preference shareholders get paid before ordinary shareholders. Okay, so they take preference and hence the word preference. Okay. Yeah. Paid before ordinary shareholders. Yeah. Okay, then there's an example here showing the income statement, and there's an example here showing the statement of changes in equity. Okay, let's just write down a few more items that you could have in equity. Okay, so you've got those three. Uh, next one, share capital, share premium, these are all different columns. Different account names. Okay. Right, so you can say um, different accounts, different accounts for equity, and then we'll list them. So okay. as, a you know, as a separate heading, uh, you'll have quite a few. You can label them A, B, C, D. Different. Different accounts for equity. Okay, so number one or A. Share capital. Okay, so that's the heading. First one, A, or, or number one. Share capital. Okay, share capital is the same as normal capital, it's just related to the 
equity. So in brackets underneath this or, or next to it, uh, share capital, just say uh, <coughs> uh, a price per share times the number of shares issued. A price times, price per share times the issued shares. Okay, so they issue a million shares, the price times the shares will give you the equity. Okay. Okay. Right, next one, share premium account. Okay, so you get a share capital account. The next one is called a share premium account. Okay, share premium. What does the share premium do? You can say brackets. Share premium. Account. Yeah. Okay, uh, brackets. The, uh, the additional value above it. Uh, I'm going to use the word par value because that's what they use to describe it, par value. Okay, so par is like the average price. Okay, so uh, let me use an example. But right, when a company lists for the first time, they're going to sell shares in the market. Okay, if the market is only prepared to pay, let's say, 100 rand a share, okay, that'll be considered as par value. But right. if the company is able to sell the same share at 120 rand, the 20 rand is going to be the share premium. Does that make sense? Okay. Right, and that's what it is. It's just above the par value. Okay. Right, next one, three. Revaluation reserve. Revaluation reserve. Similar to the revaluation we did with the partnership. But apply to a company. Okay, so what does the word revaluation refer to? <coughs> when you're re looking or revaluing your assets. Correct. Okay, so revaluation reserve is used for exactly that. Okay, recording any benefit gained from the increase of a uh, the increase of the value of an asset. Recording any, any benefit or gain from, from the increase in asset value. We just give it simple. To be short. Okay, so the asset increases. If the ladder buildings increases in value, we could create a revaluation reserve for the company. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Right, the next one, general reserve. These are special equity accounts. All of these accounts will see the statement of change in equity. Do a reference the example just now. Okay, what does the word reserve mean? Set something aside. Okay, so general reserve would be keeping something aside. What would the company want to keep aside? Profits. Exactly. Okay, so I need this. A portion of profit kept for a specific purpose. Okay, it's a general reserve. So we might keep a general reserve uh, for maybe we want to buy a new building, or maybe we want to uh, invest in more technology. Okay, that requires money. So you have to invest, and big companies are going to need probably a few, maybe million, uh, to invest in a specific area. Okay, so what they'll do is they'll create a general reserve and they'll keep it for a specific purpose. Okay, so a portion of profit kept for a specific purpose. And that's the purpose of the reserve. Okay, next one. Last one, retained earnings. That one you should know. That one we've seen before. Still remember what retained earnings is? Uh, what money kept? The profit year. So profit carried over to a future year. Okay, so if I make a profit this year and I don't distribute it in the form of a dividend, I'm then going to keep it and it's going to be called retained earnings. Okay, so dividends is what you pay out, retained earnings is what you keep. Okay, and that's it. That's all of the... Uh, do you want to reference this or do you want to write it in? Uh, do you, okay, don't write in the figures, maybe just do the columns. Okay, okay so uh, this is the template. So if we're doing a statement of change in equity for a company, only for a company, 
will you have these additional columns? You might have all the columns. It depends on what they give you. Right, but this is what it would look like. Okay, so I think just write down the columns and the rows. Uh, don't worry about the numbers. Then we can see later when we do an example. Okay, we'll do the assignment. Seven changes in equity. Yeah, that's the format. You can even reference it. This is page 242. Okay, but let's just draw up the, the column names at just what's on the left here. Okay, this is the structure. This is what you would study uh, for the actual exam, unless they give you a technical format. Okay, if they do, they're great, it helps you. But if they don't, then you'll have to structure it like this. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six columns. Okay, we'll also include the total at the end. Okay, and oh well, six columns and then one column for the details. Okay, so you actually need seven in total. Two, six, seven, yeah. Okay, the first column will be a bit longer because you need to write it a bit more detail. That's seven? Perfect, okay. Right, so first line item is the balance. Always, 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 always have a balance. Okay, below that, share, uh, share issue. Below that, revaluation. Below that, transfer to general reserve. Okay, so you can see they're transferring something to the general reserve. Uh, there's, there's three more. Uh, profit for the year is the next one. Then dividends paid. And then the final is obviously draw a total line like this, straight across, and then just label it balance for the end of the year. Okay, so the balance that you had at the beginning, maybe just put BOY next to the first balance. Okay, BOY is beginning of the year. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Right, and then you just need the headings, and then you've got the structure. Yes, yeah, so that's what you would have to draw up if you asked to do a statement of change in equity for a company. Okay, perfect. Uh, Okay, I'll read out the column names. Just want to see what else is coming up. Okay, next thing. So we're just going to finish this chapter today. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, it is quite long. Let's see how far we get. If the next one's not too long. We can do. We can start with it if it's not too long. Okay. Chapter six. Okay, finance. Oh wow, chapter 26 is two pages. Sure. <laughs> okay, so I think we can do that as well. Today. We should be able to finish it. Okay, we, we're about a third through this. Okay, we've got two thirds left off here. Okay. All right, first one, share capital. And we'll do the heading. Next one, share premium. Okay, these are the ones that we actually wrote down. Okay, so you had bullets, the pink uh, bullet points for each one. Yeah. Actually wrote it down. Okay, revaluation reserve. Revaluation reserve. reserve. Then general reserve. Retained earnings. And then a total column for everything. Retained earnings. Okay, that's a structure. Right, so that's what you would study. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, new statement. So now we've looked at two. Income statement, we wrote down notes for it. Statement of change in equity, you wrote down notes for it. Okay, here's the last one. Statement of financial position. It's actually identical to a um, sole proprietor and a partnership. Okay, there's not much difference with the statement of financial position for all the different businesses. Okay, the reason why is because financial position is calculated looking at assets and liabilities. 
is the same thing applies here. Take your assets, take your liabilities, get the difference. Okay, so bullet number one. Assets and liabilities are disclosed. Okay, when we get non-current and current, that's what's important. Okay, so assets and liabilities have to be disclosed. I need that to say brackets, non-current and current. Okay, non-current represents long term. Current represents short term. You need both. Okay, that's the disclosure. Okay, that you've you've been doing quite a bit. Okay, assets, non-current, current. Liabilities are current, current. All right, then the next point: summary of the statement of financial uh, statement of change in equity. Okay, so even in the statement of financial position. Summary of the statement of change in equity here. These things. Okay, but you won't show all the detail, you'll just show the totals. Statement of changes in equity. Okay, it's just summarizing it, it pulls from that information. Okay. Right, uh, let's see what else do we have. Okay, we've got that, we've got, oh, okay, here. Uh, the equity part. Okay, so you can just add underneath that point. Where would ordinary shares go? And the assets, liabilities, or equity? Assets, liability. Equity. Okay, remember we said ordinary shares are owned by ordinary shareholders. That's right, so the first bullet. Ordinary shares, we'll use an example of $1 each. Ordinary shares? Of $1 each. Okay, you can highlight that one dollar each, and you can write there par value. Okay, so earlier we spoke about a par value. That's the par value. It's what it's worth ultimately. Okay, when you like issuing it. Okay, you can sell those shares at two rand. If you do, then you're going to have a share premium. Okay. All right. Next line. Preferred shares. Uh, they actually start with a, a percentage. So the reason why there's a percentage here is because preferred shares are paid out a specific dividend. Okay, so preferred shares in brackets, you can say, reduce the numbers here, 7%. Close brackets of 1 rand each. Okay, so again, par value is what? The 1 rand each. Highlight the 7%. And you can write there preference dividend. Preference dividend. Right, so do you agree if I have preference shareholders, I have to pay them a dividend? Okay, they have preference to the profit. How much must I pay them? I have to pay them 7%. Okay. Right, underneath this heading, preference share dividend. Uh, you do get different types of preference shares. So just these are like asterisk line items. Right? You get cumulative preference shares. You get non-cumulative preference shares. You get participating preference shares and you get redeemable preference shares. All different types of preference shares. Okay, cumulative, non-cumulative, participating, and redeemable. Those are the four different types. And obviously normal. Okay. Okay. Right, then uh, separate heading, separate topic, still under this though, yeah. debentures. Okay. okay, what is a debenture, do you remember? It's like so, a share. Uh, it is like a share, but a it's loan. actually a loan, good. Okay, let's write that down. A loan which is split into smaller portions. Okay, so large companies that require big amounts of capital. Okay, if a large company is trying to raise a hundred million, it's going to be difficult to find one bank that's going to give them that. 
it would be easier to maybe find five banks that could give them 20 each. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Okay, so a debenture is a loan that splits into smaller portions. Okay. Uh, you can also just say, uh, similar to a bond, because there are certain terms and conditions. Okay, that you'd have to go into detail. I doubt I'll text that. That's just similar there. to a bond? Similar to a bond, uh, comma, terms and conditions apply. There's a debenture will have certain terms and conditions. Okay, another bullet, reserves. Okay, they've explained two types of reserves. Okay, so you need two. The first one, A, a revenue reserve. And then B is a capital reserve. Okay, so you get two types. Right, they're actually quite easy to remember because the word revenue helps you to think about something and the word capital helps you to think about something. Okay, so what do we say reserve is, is going to be doing? Keep. Keep what? The, the profits, exactly, good. Okay, so if I have a revenue reserve, a revenue reserve, I'm going to read the definition, are profits that are retained in the company to strengthen my financial position. They are normal trading profits that have been retained and plowed back into the company. They are added to the retained earnings from the previous years in a statement of change in equity. Okay, so revenue reserve is from the operations. Okay, we take that money and we put it back into the business's operations. Okay, so let's, let's run a note for that. Okay, so this is reserve. Revenue reserve. Revenue reserve. Yeah. Okay, so revenue reserve. A company carries over profit from its operations. Okay, so I, I run the business, the business makes profit. Okay, I don't pay out the profit in the form of a dividend, keep it for next year. So the company carries over? A profit from operations. That's the key, okay, it's operations. Okay, it, it's, like, it's like doing the work, okay, working. Uh, Generating income for the business. Okay, number two, capital reserve. Okay, I'll read it out. Definition arises from capital transactions and adjustments to the capital structure of the company. Okay, so if I sell a building, is that revenue or is that capital? capital. That's capital. Okay, we're not in the business of selling buildings. Okay, unless we're a real estate agent or whatever. Okay, but if you're selling one of the assets of the business, is that going to bring in cash? Is that going to bring in a profit? Yes. Could you keep that aside? Yes. That's a capital reserve. Okay. So if you sell a building, you would probably keep that profit for maybe buying a new one or, or upgrade the existing ones. Okay. Do you see how that makes sense? Okay. So two types of reserves. The one, the reserve comes from operations. Okay. You're selling goods. You're rendering a service. You keep the profit for next year. Okay? The next one, B, mm -hmm. what happens? You sell a capital asset. Okay, so selling a capital asset or restructuring the equity. Okay, so you could buy or sell shares here and that will give rise to a specific uh, profit or loss. So okay, selling a capital asset or? Uh, or adjusting or adjustments to the capital structure. That's what they've defined it here as. Or adjusting. Or adjustments, or adjusting the capital structure. Okay, underneath this, they've split it into three. Okay, so for capital reserves, mm -hmm. number one, share premium account, number two, revaluation reserve, number three, capital redemption reserve. These are share three. Premium yeah, share premium account. Two, revaluation reserve. Three, capital redemption reserve. That's just related to capital. That's all. And then the last one? Capital redemption reserve.
Okay, perfect. All right, now we've got all the theory. Now we'll look at the accounting. Okay, so do you want to start a new page or do you want to carry on? Uh, no, let me start a new page. Okay. Look at the that's, the last time. You know, that's the theory. Okay. Okay, so we've done all the theory. Now we need to look at all these T accounts, debits and credits <coughs> and all that stuff. <coughs> okay, and then, then that wraps up this chapter. Okay, so the last bit of this chapter is just the debits and credits. Uh, and then I see a calculation in the next day. Okay. Right. Yeah, we get some more paper and we can play with some of these. Okay, so we're looking at accounting now. Okay, that was all the theory. Okay, so when we talk about things like a reserve, now we know what it is. Okay. Right, so you can put a heading here accounting for uh, transactions in companies. Okay, or you can just say accounting even if you just want to. Keep it simple. Okay, we'll look at different transactions. Okay, so the first one. Uh, number one, issuing shares at a premium. That's the first transaction that you need to account for. Okay, so now let's think that? logically. Issuing shares at a premium. Okay, let's find another example. E.g. Okay, e.g. example, ABC offers a hundred thousand shares We should be specific, offer, uh, maybe you could say 100,000 ordinary shares or shares brackets ordinary at 50 cents each to be sold at $1.50. Right, so now how are we going to account for that transaction? Okay, well let's think about it logically. Okay, if we're going to be selling shares, let's uh, let's think about a, a sole proprietor. If a sole proprietor raises capital from the owner, what do you do? What do you credit? Is that? If a sole proprietor sells, a, well, if a sole proprietor gives equity to the business, what do you do? What do you credit? Debit bank, credit the capital. Exactly. Okay, so if you think about it logically, debit bank, credit, capital. capital. Are we still going to debit bank here? Yeah. Yes. Okay, if you sell shares to shareholders, what do the shareholders give you? Money. Okay, they invest in the business. Yeah. Do you agree? Okay, so let's write that down. First bit, first half of the transaction, DR, debit, Bank, bracket, asset increase. See, this is basics that you've learned how to do long. <coughs> okay, which is applying the same process. But what are we going to credit here? Credit? Credit. Share capital. But these shares are issued at a premium. So we're not only going to credit the share capital, we're also going to credit the share premium. Okay, so there's your... Transaction. That's what you did with, that's what you credit. Okay, and obviously once you've got the working, then you, if you wanted to, you could show it like this, T accounts. Yeah. Okay, so let's write in the figures. How much money do you receive? A hundred thousand shares times? One hundred fifty. One hundred fifty, exactly. What does that equal? One hundred thousand. Times? Should be 150,000. Yeah. Okay, so write in 150,000 next to the debit. Okay, so total cash that's going to come into the business is $150,000. Of the $150,000, how much of it is the share capital and how much of it is the premium? 50 cents is what? The, the share capital, good. Okay, so that'll be 50,000. And the 100,000 is the premium. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so you're just splitting it. You're showing how much belongs to what the... What does premium mean, though? Premium means additional. Uh, so, for example, you get premium brands. Okay, a premium brand would be additional, something more. Okay, it's not just normal. Okay, so you get premium, you get normal. Now, premium means above. Okay, so what what is the price of the share? 50 cents. But what are people paying for it? One rand fifty or one dollar fifty. Does it make sense? Okay, so premium is the additional. Okay, so how much more did they pay for those shares? An extra one dollar per share. So they gave the company an additional hundred thousand. Why? It's probably a good company. Okay, they like the company. Okay, that's the first one. Right, uh, next one. Yeah, revaluation reserve. Next accounting transaction, number two. You could say transfers or, okay, well, just revaluation reserve, that's fine. Revaluation reserve. Okay, so what do you think is going to happen here? Well, what is the revaluation reserve representing? Let's think about the theory. Profit that we've kept aside, do we? Okay, so what type of balance do you think a revaluation reserve will have? Debit or credit? Debit. No. Credit, because it's profit that you've kept aside. Okay, so if it's profit, profit will have what balance? Debit or credit? Debit. Credit. Credit. Because it's more income than expenses. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so let's write a note. A revaluation reserve will have a credit balance. Because profit is set aside for future use. We'll have a credit balance. Credit balance because profit will be set aside for future use. Okay, let's use an example. Okay, e.g. Uh, non current assets equal forty thousand. The valuation at thirty first December is fifty one thousand. Fifty one. Yeah. What do I do or what do I credit? How do I increase the non current assets? Debit valuation. Uh, no, debit the non current assets. Okay, whatever it is. It could have been land buildings, it could have been equipment, it could have been vehicles. Okay, so debit, yeah. uh, debit non current assets, brackets, asset increase. Okay, that's the working Bracket. asset increase. Okay, credit what? The revaluation. The revaluation re reserve, correct. Okay, credit the revaluation reserve. How much would it be? No. The valuation value is 51. The non current assets are worth 40. So the difference. Exactly. Okay, the difference. Right, so debit, 11,000. Credit, 11,000. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so you're only accounting for the difference. Okay, because if I record an additional 51,000, that represents I've increased about 51, which I haven't. Okay, next. Number three. Increasing or reducing share capital. Okay, there are two separate debits and credits here. Reducing? No, increasing or reducing share capital. Okay. Right, so the increasing we've actually looked at, do you agree? Yeah. That's the issuing of new shares. So underneath the word increasing, you can say C transaction one. You would do the exact same thing. 
If you sold more shares in the company, you would just repeat transaction number one. Does that make sense? See transaction one above. The first one you looked at. Okay. Right, but reducing, will I need something? Yes. Okay, so the reducing is what we need to look at. Okay, so underneath reducing, let's write down what we will do. Okay, so what happens if you're reducing the amount of shit that you've issued? Meaning, you're buying them back. What's going to happen? So you can write it down. Uh, reducing the number of shares issued in brackets, i.e. share buyback. Right, so previously, investors had given us capital because they wanted to invest. Now, we want to buy back some of the shares because we don't want them as shareholders. Yeah. Okay, we're buying back our equity. Right, so what happens there? Well, initially, you've got debit back, credit share capital. What would you do now? Yes. Exactly. Okay, so debit share capital, debit share premium, depending on whether or not these were. So debit and share capital? Or not. Share capital slash share premium, it could be both. Share capital slash premium. It just depends on the question. Okay, but you're reversing it out. And then credit, what? The, the bank. Hey, you're paying. Bank asset decrease. Okay. Right, how many more? Last one. Maybe we've got some theory. Okay. Last one, number four. Fourth transaction. Rights issue and bonus issues of shares. And I need the word rights issue, we can discuss what that is. Okay, so if you have the rights to something, okay, that rights allows you to buy more shares. Okay, so when they talk about equity, they talk about a rights issue when the company is wanting the existing shareholders to contribute more capital. Okay, so let's write that down. Okay, so this is theory. Right issue. A right issue is when a company issues more shares. Right issue when a company issues more shares to existing shareholders. Issues more shares, shares to existing shareholders. Okay, let's look at the debiting credits. Okay, this one I have to use as an example so you'll know what, what's happening. Okay, so EG. Yeah. Ordinary shares of 50 cents each. Totals 2,500. Okay, so 50 cents each, totaling 2,500. Okay, the right issue. The company makes a right issue of. So you can just say right issue of. The company makes a right issue of one new share for every four shares originally held. One new share for... For every four shares originally held. Okay, so whatever you started with. If you started with... So let me ask you this. If I started by owning one share, how, how, how much am I going to get? Nothing. Okay, if I held four shares, how much am I going to get? One new share. I'm going to get an extra share. Okay. We need a price here. So, uh, originally held... 
at a price of $1.25. Okay, that's the information. Okay, now we need to account for it. $1? $1.25. Okay. Okay, so what do you think we're going to debit? What do you think we're going to credit? Let's Debit right shares. Uh, debit the right shares, no. Okay, uh, what's happening if you're issuing more shares? Your shares are increasing. Something is decreasing. Okay, so if you're issuing new shares, you could have issued new shares from the retained earnings, possibly. Okay, so would the retained earnings go up or down? No, you go down because you're basically giving people more shares for what they already own. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay, so if we're going to be paying out these shares or raising capital through a right issue, it could be paid through the retained earnings, possibly. Okay, so you could say debit retained earnings slash bank. It could have been either or. They weren't specific here. Okay, so you can either issue more shares as is, or you can issue it from retained earnings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Credits, share cap, share capital and share premium. Okay, same as before. Share capital slash share premium. Okay. okay. Obviously we'll need to know how many shares the company held. Okay, so let's work that out. Uh, just as a separate working, you know, they, uh, at the back here they talk about calculations, okay, mathematics. So I'm just bringing this through to what we have here. Okay. So, how much equity did the business have? Uh, $2,500. Good. How much were the shares worth? 56 Good. How many shares did the company issue or has issued? Doesn't say. You have to work it out. Okay. Okay. Twenty-five uh, two two thousand five hundred divided by fifty cents equals how many shares? Five thousand. Okay. Fifty cents. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Good. how many shares has the company issued? Five thousand. Good. Let's write that down. The company has issued. 5,000 shares. How did I get that? 2,500 divided by 50 cents. So more from a five zero. has issued? 5,000 shares. How did I get the 5,000? Open brackets. 2,500 divided by more comma, more, uh, more comma five zero. Okay, 50 cents. That's how it works. But how many shares are you issuing? One share for every? Four held. So how many shares are you going to issue? Five. Okay, so how many shares do people hold? Five thousand. Yeah. How many shares are you going to give them? Four thousand. One for every? Four. Four held. Yeah. Do you agree? Okay, so how are we going to work out? We have to divide five thousand by four and then times by one share. Does that make sense? So uh, yeah, so five five thousand divided by four times one equals good one thousand no not rands that's shares okay remember the price is separate okay because they told us we're issuing one share for every four health does it make sense okay. Right, and that's that. Uh, just to know about the bonus issue. Okay, so that, that was the right issue. Uh, separate bullets. A bonus issue of shares. Okay, underneath that you can say, the company gives the existing shareholders more equity. That's all. It's not shares, I'm kind of blank. Uh, S-H-A-R-E-S, yeah.
Bonus issue of shares, yeah? Yes, uh, now we need to describe it. Next bullet. Yeah. Uh, the company gives existing shareholders more equity. Yeah, it's almost like a gift. Okay, a bonus is like a gift. A bonus is something totally separate, totally extra. Okay, it's not, it's not you have to. Okay, there's no such thing as we have to get bonus shares. Okay, if the company does well and they want to issue more shares, they can reward the shareholders by giving them more. Yeah. Okay, it, it all depends. Right, so that's what we're looking at there. Right, so you can say note, debit reserve, credit share capital. That's what they would do. Debit the reserve, credit the share capital. Right, that's how you would give them a bonus issue. Okay, perfect. That's complete. Okay, the last one is just the theory. We'll be done with this chapter. This. Okay, great. Three pages of theory. Then we've got two pages of theory, and we're done. Okay, what was there? Okay. Right. You can just say here other other considerations. We'll just label them all. Other considerations. Number one. Okay, so number one, okay, the first one is split into three. Okay, so the heading here is non current assets, and then underneath it we've got three bullets. Okay, okay so the first one, other considerations, non current assets. So uh, when, we, when we're dealing with a, uh, a public company, okay, we're dealing with a company, it's a big business, okay, what non current assets would a company have that would be different from the sole prior to a partnership? What? Non -current assets? What non-current assets will a company have will be different than a sole proprietor or partnership? Shares. No, shares for a company's equity. Don't know. Okay, the first one, intangible assets. Here's the first one. Intangible means something you can't see or touch. Okay, e.g. a copyright. Okay, or a patent. But that bottle of water is quite creative to agree. Yeah. Okay, it's different. But the design of that bottle of water would have had a patent or a copyright for the design. Yeah. Okay, so if someone copies the bottle of water, it's, in, it's going to infringe on their right because it was their idea. Okay, it was their design. Right, so that's an intangible asset. Okay, copyright, uh, a trademark, um, a recipe. Okay, Coca Cola. Right, the Coca-Cola recipe would be copyright. Okay, it would be like a trade secret. Okay, unless you're working for Coca-Cola, you'll never know exactly what the recipe is. Yeah. Right, and those are intangibles. Okay, the second one, tangible assets. That's the straightforward one. But they'll have bigger tangible assets. So, plant, machinery. Physics, vehicles, there's a lot. Okay. Large companies will have lots of different tangible assets. Okay. You should know what they are. So if you want to write an example, you can. Okay. Then point number three under this point, investments. Okay. So can a company invest in other companies? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. We call that investment. Okay. So investment in A, investment in B, investment in C. Right, uh, number two, okay, so second, like, main point. What, like, second? Yeah, like that. Provisions, reserves, and liabilities. Just group it in all as one. Provisions, reserves, and liabilities. Okay, do you know what a provision is? No, yeah. Being yeah, prudent. Yeah. Okay, so uh, provisions for companies are the same thing. Okay, you could just say providing for future eventualities. We can raise a provision. Providing for future eventualities. Yeah, things that can occur. Yeah. Okay. okay, reserves, that's simple, keeping something for the future, 
Okay, so reserve, uh, save it for the future. You can maybe use that. Save it for the future. And under liability, you can just say financing. Again, they break it up into not current to current, but we'll discuss that, so you don't need to write it down again. Okay, that's it. Uh, we can just put one note here, it's very short. Staple of cash flow, you don't have to cover it, but they discuss it just in terms of theory. Okay, there's no cash flow statement here that you need to do. Okay, staple of cash flow. All you need to write down there at the bottom is inflows and outflows are monitored. That's it. Okay, you, you don't have to do a, a cash flow statement, <coughs> so don't panic about it. Okay, and then I see at the end of the textbook, there's just a note for calculation, so another additional information is that, that would have been number three. And then number four, the last one for this chapter. Okay, remember yeah. depreciation. Yeah. Okay, how do you calculate depreciation? Two methods, do you remember? Yeah, straight line diminution. Good, let's, re let's recall that. Straight line or diminishing balance. And I've given you some depreciation here. Uh, and I looked at some cash flow, but cash flow was just looking at the bank. Uh, we can maybe add that to here. Uh, next to cash flow, let's just say brackets, focus on bank. Okay, why do we focus on bank? Because the bank represents the inflows and the outflows, exactly. Okay, we've got one, two, three pages of theory. Can you push through? Yeah. Perfect. Right, chapter 26. It's literally three pages of theory, and that's the chapter, so nice and short. The heading, company financing. Okay, it's kind of like carrying where we left off here. We spoke about liabilities. Uh, so that's exactly what we're looking at here. Company financing. Okay, the reason why we're looking at this now is because if you look at the work program, the next bit is all management accounting, that's yeah. internal. Okay, what we've come to here, this is actually the last bit of accounting. Then we look at ratios, okay, analysis, see? Okay, you've done ratios before, we did ratios last year as well. Okay, we just need to see how many ratios they're testing this year. Okay, there could be more. Okay, so last bit, three pages of theory, let's start. The first one, definition. When you see the word company financing, what are you thinking about? Yeah. From what? From, from from sources. Okay, sources of capital. That's what you're looking at. Good. Okay. So company financing is looking at where do you get the money? That's actually what you're looking at. Okay, sources of finance. Okay, a source would be the origin. Okay, i.e., where did it come from? Okay, did you get it from savings? Did you get it from your investors? Did you get it from a loan? That's what we're looking at here. Okay. Okay. Right, so the first type, number one, okay. cash management, that's the first one. Next to that heading, in brackets, write down short term. Okay, so cash is short term, cash isn't long term. That's the source of finance. Okay, so... Do we know what cash management is? Well, yes. Okay, we should. All right, so uh, what must you do to manage cash? Record. Recording is good, but a budget is better. Okay, there's the key. Companies have a budget. Uh, just put a T there. Oh, yeah, it's... B U D G budget. Okay, it's correct. I really good. Okay. Okay, so that's cash management. Number two. Okay. 
creditors control. That's an easy one. Do you still remember what a creditor is? Mm -hmm. So now explain to me why a creditor would be seen as a source of finance. Because they're going to pay you interest and they're going to pay you back. No, they don't pay us. Oh, because we pay them. Yeah. yeah. So how, how is that a source of finance? Because they give us resources to sell. 100%. There's the answer. Okay, so underneath that, creditors are suppliers that give you resources today and only require payment later. Is that okay? Perfect. Right, number three. Inventory management. Inventory management. Okay, is inventory important to the business? Yeah. Why? What does inventory allow the business to do? Exactly, good. Okay, so under inventory, how is inventory a source of finance? Goods are bought and sold. Okay, so buying and selling inventory. Some of these things we'll only look at later. Okay, I don't know how much of the management account they're going to test you. We'll see later when we look at the next few chapters. Uh, we've got 28, 29, 30, 31 to look at, which is the cost of management accounting. Uh, what you want there? Goods, bought and sold. Good. Next to it, just say brackets. EOQ, comma, JIT, just in time. Those are the only two that I've mentioned here. Okay. You can close the brackets. Right, so those are some of the things that they've mentioned. I think that's what we've looked at in finance. Okay. okay I don't know finance, economics, uh, business studies. Okay, there's a few more. Number four, bank overdraft. Oh, I forgot to put the timing here. Credits control short term or long term? Mm -hmm. Good, just add that. Because yeah, they are long term notes here as well. Uh, same for the other one as well. Inventory management, short term. Okay, number four, bank overdraft. That's an easy one. How is the bank overdraft a source of finance? If you have a bank overdraft, what does the bank allow you to do? Take more than you had in your account. Okay, so then withdraw or take, taking more than what's in the account. Brackets short term as well. Three, uh, no, how, how five, bank loan. Yeah, that's short term as well. Number five can be both, long term and short term. I'm going to discuss it here, so we've got both. It's, it's covered later as well under the long term section. Okay, so bank loan, brackets, long term, slash, short term. It just depends. You can take a short term loan, you can take a long term loan, same thing, still loan. You can just say source uh, money from the bank. That's what it is. Okay, this is a nice one that you might have uh, known before. I think we did look at this previously. Uh, I'll see if, if you remember it. Factoring, do you remember what that is? Okay, factoring is the next one. Okay, factoring is selling the debtor's book. That's what it is. Okay, so if you sell on credit, you have to collect the degree. So is it possible to sell that to like a debt collector? Yes. Okay, the debt collector might say, well, okay, Brittany, you've got 10 customers owing you X. Okay, I'll give you maybe 80% of that. So I'll collect it for you and I'll give you everything that you're doing. That's what you're doing. Okay, that's factory. They're right. Yeah. Perfect.
Okay, this how the three three go, four go. Okay. Uh, what number we are? Six. Okay, so six. Higher purchase slash trade and other payables. Higher purchase slash trade and other payables. They both refer to the same thing. Okay, so you can buy from a business on higher purchase or there can be a payable. Right, i.e., uh, think about water and electricity. What happens? I, I use the water and electricity, I pay for it next month. Okay, so like a could expect. So the bullet under that, uh, using or getting a resource today and paying later. That's all. It's very similar to creditors, but creditors look at your supplier. This is looking at the expenses, things that you're buying. Using or getting a resource today? Paying later. Okay. okay, eight. Share capital. Oh, is this short term or long term? Long term. Short term. Okay, share capital, that's long term. Yeah, that's short term. Right, share capital, we've looked at it. You don't have to write much there, you get to say uh, issuing shares. Okay, and then we've got two more. Nine. Nine. Leasing. L E A S I N G. Leasing. Okay, that's leasing. That's some line. Okay, so what is a lease? Like it's like renting, exactly. Okay, so you can say in inverted commas, renting an asset that you don't own. But so we, do we have to buy a building to use the office space? No. no. I can rent the building and I can still use the assets. Okay, is that long term or short term? Can be both. You can get long term leases and you can get short term leases. Okay. okay, so renting an asset, you could say brackets the use. Okay, so I don't have to own the asset as long as I can use it. I'm happy. Okay, the last one, sale and lease back. Lease back. Okay, gain source of financing. So what do you do? Uh, so let's say if you own the building, is it possible to raise capital? Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's sell it and then let's lease it back. Do you see? So if the building is worth 10 million, you can sell the building, get 10 million cash, mm -hmm. and then every month just pay to rent the building. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's exactly what you're doing. Okay, so under lease, under sell and lease back, just write a note. Selling a building we own and leasing slash renting it back. That's what you're doing. It's also finance.